world. When Jesus continued the teachings of the Old Testament by saying, Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not hate, because hate is the same thing as murder. He was taking these ideas and thoughts and making them deeper and broader. Kind of a testimony of how far away the human heart is from God's desire. And he has become popular because of it. I think, my friends, there is something to say about the spiritual power revealed through Jesus Christ and how we can have access to that same power. He was teaching very simple things. But he was revealing that those simple things can make your life amazingly powerful and influential. And it can make the world a better place. You see, Christianity is not just a ticket to the life hereafter, the good life hereafter. The Christian experience, spiritual awakening, is a means to understanding a different kind of power. A power that can influence people way beyond your life. And Jesus Christ is an example of that. We follow Jesus. And because we follow Jesus, we are to leave, in a sense, the same kind of impact that he did. But we have to understand that to do so, we need to understand what spiritual power is all about. And this is kind of what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the fact that eyes have not seen what you and I can become. Not just talking about the life hereafter. I'm talking about the life that God wants to produce in and through you. A life that will leave an impact way beyond you, just as Jesus Christ did. Being a follower of Jesus reveals that. And hopefully we will understand how to access that today. Let's pray. Father, in these few moments, I pray you'll help us to understand spiritual power. Help us to understand that Jesus Christ, as simple as he was raised, the reason why we remember him today is because he demonstrated the power that comes through obedience to your word. The power, the influence that we can have on lives through this very simple doctrine of loving you and loving each other. Help us to understand how to manifest that in our lives. And help us to understand that no eye has seen nor ear has heard the kind of influence that can only come through our lives as we submit ourselves to this power. Help us to get that today and to live it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It's one of my favorite uh, passages from the Apostle Paul, where he's trying to help us to understand spiritual power, but he's doing it in a very unique way. He wants us to understand that this power is not like the way we understand power out there in the world. Most people, in order to be powerful, they use their influence, whether it is money, whether it is position, in order to demonstrate influence over people, in order to gain power onto themselves. But that's not the kind of power that Jesus is talking about. Spiritual power comes to us kind of in the opposite way. It's not as you seek it. It is as you humble yourself before God. So it comes to you not through a desire or a drive to attain it, it comes to you as you give yourself more and more to God's leading in your life. Well, let's see how that works. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 says there, And I, this is Paul speaking, I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And, it was, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of, of the spirit 
and of power so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. He's giving us a formula here. But this is not a formula that we are used to. He said, when I came to you to demonstrate to you true Christianity, to tell you the message of Christ, I made sure not to do the things that people who are seeking in power, who are seeking power, will do. I didn't come here dressed up nicely, speaking in flowery words, doing all the things that people who want to influence you do. Instead, I came to you in humility, in a se with a sense of awe, with a sense of feeling dependence on God to help you. That is the spirit in which I came, and that is a spirit which demonstrates the power of God. I don't want to say it's opposite world, but it's a lot like opposite world. If you read the scriptures, you will read things like, in order to be strong in the Lord, you have to be weak. In order to demonstrate strength, you have to submit yourself to God's leadership. It's the opposite of what the world does. We seek out power. We seek influence. We use our words. We use the way we look to try to get what we want. But that's not the way it works with God. If you want to be first, you have to be last. If you want to lead, you have to be led. If you want to exert influence, you have to let God exert his influence upon you. It's still going to demonstrate the power of God, but it is going to demonstrate that power unadulterated by our sinful nature. When we are least, then God is able to shine through us the most. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is about allowing God to live in me, not allowing myself to dictate righteousness. That is why a lot of people look at Christianity as something that kind of exposes you. It leaves you to being scrutinized. It leads you to be probably feeling like people can take advantage of you. But you see, what you are doing is you are demonstrating the power and influence of God through your life so that in the end, People don't tap you on the back and say, you're so wonderful. They look up to the heavens and they say, God, you are wonderful. Look at how you are demonstrating yourself through Andrew. When people hear my words, they're not looking at me and saying, oh, how wonderful. They're saying, look at spiritual wisdom coming from God through this guy. That, my friends, is what it is all about no eye has seen, nor any ear has heard that which God wants to do in you and through you to demonstrate his glory. Look at what he did through his son, who went about doing good, teaching the truth, doing the things that were right, and yet still, even though he influenced so many towards the Father, he was still hated, he was still discriminated against, and ultimately he was killed for being righteous. Let me make this clear. Spiritual power does not keep you or prevent you from being unduly mistreated. A lot of people use power as a means to prevent themselves from being mistreated. We see that everywhere today. People are trying to align laws and rules so that they are safe so that they don't have to worry about scrutiny. But that's not the way that it works in Christianity. Our spiritual power is not for self-aggrandizement or to protect ourselves. What we get this power for is so that we might be used by God to let people know the only way to true life. It's not about self-protection. It's about the glory and honor of God. So whereas people try to get power for themselves, we don't do that. We use spiritual power as a means to point people to God. To point people to their only help. And this is why Paul says in many different places, it's not about me. 
I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. He's saying to you and me, spiritual power is not about me. It's about God's glory. It's about bringing people to God. That's what Jesus did, and that's what you and I are called to do. He gives us the blessing of spiritual power, not for ourselves, but so that others will see God in us and be drawn to him. No eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor has the heart even imagined what God wants to look like in you and in me. But the issue is, am I ready to allow God to demonstrate that power in me? Many of us as Christians, we get very nervous when we're putting God first and then we find that he's bringing persecution our way or difficulty our way or people are mistreating us because of it. So we give up. But oh my friend, think about this. If my life is ultimately about honoring God, what greater way can I honor God than by just allowing his power and his spirit to have free reign in me every day? If I lose my life in the process, I have gained eternal bliss and reward for it. There is no downside in allowing God's power to rule and reign in my life. God wants us to live that way. But more than that, he wants us to get excited about this idea that he can demonstrate in me a power that has never been seen in this world before. Let me be clear on this. No matter how gifted you are, you can never do the things that God has told me to do. I want to say that again. As gifted as you are, you're not called to demonstrate the power of God in the same way that I am. You're called to do it in the way that God has called you to do it. I am called to do it in the way that God has called me to do it. So it is my responsibility to line my life up in obedience to God so that God will work through me. And it's a unique work. It is my responsibility every day to say, Lord, have your way in me so that you can produce something unique that this world needs. So that they may trust you more. So that they may come to you more. What we can become, no eye has seen, no ear, nor ear has heard, nor has it even entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for you to be and what for me to be. But not only that, not only abundance of life, abundance in the life hereafter. We read also in the book of John 14, in my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So God's desire is not just to produce spiritual power in and through you in this life. It is about giving to you and granting to you the reward of his presence in the life hereafter. Think about the greatest, most beautiful place you've ever been to in this world. The Bible says, no eye has seen nor ear heard, nor has even entered into your imagination the things that God has prepared for you and for me. The peace, the joy, the bliss. Finally, no more taxes, no more bills, no more sickness, none of the things that we worry about in this life. Waiting for us. God gives us that blessing to encourage us that to live is Christ. But guess what? Even if I die, it's still gain. Because he has rewarded me with the blessing of spiritual power in this life. And the reward of spiritual power in the life hereafter. Heaven, bliss, joy. So, if I'm worried about this life, he says to me, focus on being Christ, or living out the life of Christ in and through your life, through spiritual power every day. And remember that when this life is over, no eye has seen nor ear heard what you will enjoy in God's presence for eternity. Be encouraged today, Christian. Take it as a challenge. 
I, one of my favorite verses is found in Philippians, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. There is something about this goal of having God work in and through my life, demonstrating things that have never been seen before. That influenced Paul in his Christian walk. If I live, it's for Christ. If I die, it's great. Why? Because I just want the fullness of God to be demonstrated in and through me. Is that how you feel, Christian? Do you want spiritual power manifest in and through your life? God offers it to us, but not the way the world takes it. We don't do it through selfish desire. We do it as we submit ourselves to God every day, doing what he says, committing ourselves to obeying him even when it's, when it's difficult. That's how we see God's power manifest in us. And he says, if you live for me, the reward is you will be with me when you die as well and you will enjoy my presence for all eternity. It sounds like a great package deal. And I pray that you all will be able to enjoy that deal both for this life and for the life to come. Trust in Christ. Father, thank you so much for this word. Eyes have not seen or ear heard what you want to produce in my life, but also what you have prepared for me. Let me, as a believer, embrace those promises. And let me, as a believer, live in the power of those promises so that I can see God live in and through my life, do something unique and powerful in and through me. In Jesus' name, amen.